natural segue to talking about peacocks now. Ravi, over to you, 7B, if you want to read that line item. Yeah, sure thing. So we move from the unhoused population to talking about one unhoused peacock. Mm, that was uh, better than mine, segue. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, on the agenda, we just had discussion and motion regarding relocation of Tivoli the peacock to a safe habitat due to increased automobile traffic. Great, so give us a little bit of context and maybe we'll see if a motion develops here. Yeah, sure thing. So two weeks ago, the Green Committee passed a motion unanimously to uh, authorize funding to relocate Tivoli the peacock because of increasing safety concerns and also just being harassed by dogs and humans, um, just not a safe uh, habitat for him. And so that, that motion passed. Um, since then, we've also tried to galvanize a volunteer effort to make it safe for him to cross the street because the biggest concern we had was that he sleeps in one place on Maxella and he goes back and forth, you know, across Maxella and comes home at sundown every night during rush hour traffic, traffic is picking up and it's just a dangerous situation. Um, we started off with, you know, having a volunteer crew but then it really went down to just one regular person. Um, and so with that, uh, we have this motion but we had to change something. We originally authorized funding up to $300 we since learned that that would fund the relocation cost. Um, we've since learned that um, we cannot authorize that funding because it's not within our actual spending priorities or you know our spending guidelines unless it were a uh, nonprofit and neighborhood purpose grant, nonprofit uh, grant. So um, I have a revised motion ready. We also have a couple of speakers. And so I think what we're going to do is um, Oh, and just since then, like I said, it's becoming increasingly dangerous because now with uh, not having volunteers and also more dog attacks, unfortunately, even this week. Um, and so maybe I can, I can, I guess, read the proposed language and then have the speakers or, you know, how do you want to do this? Yeah, let's get the motion to see if it's get the second and um, if it can be on the table and then we'll go to, let's do short with the uh, presenting speakers and we'll take public comment. I see some hands up, which is great. We'll get to that too. Um, but what is the language for us to consider? Yeah, the new language is <clears throat> the DRNC approved Actually, the- Ravi, could you share your, is it possible? It might be easier for minute yeah. taking. I'm trying to do that. Do I have the rights to do that? Yeah, give me a second. I think you can. Yeah, yeah, try it now, Ravi. Yeah, you'll yeah. need- you'll There need it is. You'll need to send that in written. Yep. Sharing. I can help with that. If you share, I'll oh, be I, able I, I, to capture. It should be. Okay, let me know if you see it. Yep, if you make a little. Yes, I do. Make a little. Can you, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you can just even 150%. Yeah, I had the wrong time. <laughs> And then, uh, Ravi, while you're doing that, who am I looking for in the attendee list to let in to speak? Yeah, it should be. Um, first, we have James Maley, if you see him. With a J. Yep, got it. James Maley. Okay. Okay, now let me know if you see. Yes. Okay. Is it big enough? No. <laughs> yeah, maybe make the. The font size itself, like twenty-five or thirty. Yeah, let me do this. That works too. Okay. Good. Okay. So the DRNC approves the relocation of Tivoli the peacock to a safer habitat due to increasing automobile traffic and other hazards, in a way that protects the safety and quality of life of the peacock, with conditional approval of a neighborhood purpose grant for up to four hundred dollars if needed. So okay, is, there, is there? Hold on, Robbie. Is there a second? I will uh, second. This is Daniel. Daniel's got the second. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Any last things on the motion, or should we go to our speakers? There, right? Yeah. If you found um, James Mail, I'll just give a quick intro for him. Um, uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's make sure you got it. Yep. James looks like he's there. If you want to do a quick intro, James, if you want to come off mute when Ravi's done giving you the quick uh, intro, give us maybe about three minutes or so because we are running a little bit late in the evening, and we'll we'll get to it. So, Ravi, over to you. Yeah, so last September, National Geographic did a story on this particular peacock uh, because it's just a peculiar location for this peacock. And uh, James Bailey is the ornithologist from Occidental College who was quoted in that article. 
And so he can talk to us about Habitat, about some of the jurisdictional issues. And so, yeah, I'll turn it over to James. Okay. James, all yours. <clears throat> okay, thanks for having me. Uh, speaking to you from my studio in El Torino. Um, <laughs> so just a little bit about me. Um, I got my bachelor's and master's from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And then I did my PhD at Louisiana State University. I graduated in 2012. And uh, since that time, I've been the collections manager of the Moore Laboratory of Zoology at Occidental College in Eagle Rock. Um, so I've studied a number of different birds, mostly genetics, but also studying uh, various species. Um, I'm going to give a very brief thing about um, peacocks. So just FYI, they've been here for uh, since 1879 in Southern California. And there are two main areas where people can go to see peacocks if they want. Um, the Palos Verdes Peninsula and Arcadia are the two main populations that live in our area. And there are uh, up to hundreds of birds at, at both of those places. And we, I postulated that this bird, Tivoli, may have come over from the PV. Um, but, you know, that's just a hypothesis. It's, it's hard to say where the bird actually came from. Um, because as I'll touch upon in just a second, anybody is free to simply buy a peacock. Um, you can have one shipped to your house if you want to, uh, as an egg, or as a chick, or as an adult. Uh, you can go online and buy a peacock right now, anywhere in the state. Um, but before I get into that, I just wanted to briefly mention some pros and cons of relocation. So the pro, the main pro, as far as I'm concerned, is the safety of the bird. Um, traffic collisions are a common cause of fatality for these peacocks, as is predation by coyotes. And one of the factors that helps protect peacocks is that they're very gregarious by nature. So they tend to flock together, uh, especially during the winter. And that flocking behavior is a deterrent to predators. So a single bird is more susceptible to predation by coyotes or other wildlife. Uh, another pro is you could potentially avoid the establishment of a population in your town by removing Tivoli, which it may sound appealing to have a population of peacocks in the town. It's, they cause a lot more problems than they, the benefits, as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, there, there are noise issues, there are uh, destruction of property issues, there's a lot of uh, waste that they leave behind and large groups of them can cause uh, a large amount of damage to both gardens and ornamental shrubbery, as well as pub private and public property. Um, another pro for relocation is that the bird would be free to roam in a safe area uh, and potentially be with others of its species. So as I said, they're gregarious. So a single male alone is not necessarily the normal condition for these birds. Uh, I've heard some talk about people wanting hoping that this bird can find a mate. Uh, these birds do not mate for life. So a male will mate with multiple females and there's not a pair bond that forms. So uh, it may seem uh, like a, a thing that we would want, but in fact, uh, the male and female, if they do come into contact, will have very little interaction with each other. And then of course the con is not having the bird around to enjoy. Um, they are beautiful. They're fun to look at, people enjoy seeing them. Um, but as I mentioned, they are very nearby. So if people really felt like they needed to see some peacocks, they could easily drive a short distance to find some that were wandering around in, in another neighborhood. Um, so just a couple jurisdictional issues for you guys. Uh, so just so you're aware, they have increased in some areas of Southern California to the point where some communities have instituted relocation programs for them. So this is a solution that other communities have used uh, is to safely relocate them. And then this is a direct quote from a, a book, The Breeding Birds of, of Los Angeles County. 
is that county populations of this bird are very much under the control of the communities which they inhabit. So your community has the authority to relocate this bird, as far as I can tell. And one primary reason for this is that they're considered domestic fowl. So it's not really any different than a chicken in somebody's yard other than it's big and beautiful. Um, so legally, it's not treated any different than a chicken either. Like I said, I could just buy one right now if I wanted to and have it shipped to my house. Um, so uh, I think that was all yeah. I really wanted to touch on. Yeah, James, thanks so much. And if we can keep you here for a second in case there's any other points of clarification from the board before we go to public comment. Mm -hmm. uh, any quick clarification questions for James from the board or he was thorough in explaining it? Doug, did you go off your video camera because you're buying a peacock online? Is that what we saw? Yeah. I was going to suggest we buy Tivoli a girlfriend. Ah, interesting. All right. Well, we'll see if that is an amendment we'll make at a later time. All right. Going to public comment. Uh, again, a decently high volume of hey, folks who want to weigh in on this issue. Robbie, real quick. Yeah, we have another speaker, you know. Oh, the sorry. Who's the, who's the second speaker? Remind me. Uh, Jonathan Gonzalez. He's the guy who spoke at the new committee. Oh, great. So, okay. Move that Jonathan in. Thanks for reminding me. Jonathan, you're on your way over. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so Jonathan, if you can give maybe a condensed version of what you shared at the uh, Green Committee, that'd be great. Yep, Jonathan, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yep, go for it. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so I am actually one of the peacock trappers uh, that James was referring to. We have done work for Palos Verdes, uh, Rolling Hills, Pasadena, San Marino, a bunch of communities that decided that their peacock uh, populations were too big. Uh, and I seen it firsthand um, doing census work uh, for some of these cities where we report how many birds we count. Uh, every year, Palos Verdes has us count uh, two separate counts and then we, we look at the numbers. Um, we're here, my main reason, uh, I run an educational outreach program with birds of prey and reptiles. And I also work with humane uh, trapping of peafowl I have moved over 600 birds uh, at this point in the last five or six years. It's probably closer to 700 now. Uh, I've seen uh, some of the things he mentioned were uh, car, cars crashing into the birds or cars crashing into each other. Uh, I've had residents tell me that has happened as well. Um, what else has happened? They, well, I've actually witnessed just recently another reason I suggest relocation. Uh, I watched a bird trying to eat styrofoam the other day. I, I chased him away to pick up the styrofoam uh, to clean that out of the street. Uh, predation, definitely a good point. Um, these birds that I relocate move to large ranch style or farm properties. Uh, most of the people really care uh, about their birds and they have a lot of other peafowl as well. Uh, so like you mentioned, when one bird sees a predator coming, uh, they'll actually sound an alarm. And so the other birds will sound. It's a big honking uh, car alarm fest. One time a car alarm went off and I heard a ton of birds freaking out because they heard the alarm. Um, yeah, so uh, my main mission here is I try to find birds great homes. I have a list that I already go with uh, and I call around. And for this particular case, I would pick, you know, some of my favorites, one that's on the table. I have not called these people yet uh, because if the motion hasn't passed or anything, I didn't want to uh, find the home. But uh, there's one guy that lives up near Yosemite. He has about 30 birds on his property uh, and they love the really large pine trees. And that's one of their safe areas that they hide. Uh, so if you go to Rancho Palos Verdes, you can look in a tree and sometimes see 20 birds. Uh, some of the really big trees, some of the smaller ones, you know, one or two. Um, I don't have much else to add there besides I, I'm very pro relocation. Uh, just for the safety of the bird. And I, one thing that broke my heart was a few weeks ago, I had to clean up a bird that was hit by a car and the other birds around were sounding the alarm and they were circling, just trying to figure out what happened. Yeah. Uh, so I really would like to um, kind of put that forward there. Okay. Sounds good, Jonathan. Thanks so much. Go ahead and hang out here. Thank we'll you. Leave, uh, yeah, we'll leave you on mute. Uh, let's go to our public comment. We will do one minute or less because of the volume and the hour. Uh, Marlene, we'll start with you. Uh, let me get you over here. Marlene, if you're there, go ahead and come off mute. Um, 
Am I okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm I am one of the official uh, board uh, crossing guards for this peacock. I cannot begin to tell you what a joy it is to see this peacock. I have, um, you know, whenever he crosses the street, and I'm always looking for him because I go around the neighborhood, especially area A, all day long. So when I do see him, I actually follow him and walk with him to make sure he is always safe. I see other people in the neighborhood always following him and making sure that he crosses safely. He is a beauty. He's just an asset to our community. I hate to see him removed. Unfortunately, I'd like to see more volunteers to make sure that he is safe. But I got to tell you, as being a crossing guard for him, it gives me such pleasure. Okay. Marlene, thank you so much. Always good to hear from you. Uh, let's go to... Uh, Dylan, if you're here, go ahead and come off mute. One minute or less when you're neighbors. Um, I have been helping Tivoli cross the street for a good three weeks now, and it has been a pleasure helping him. I have noticed definitely that it is a huge hazard for him being here. Um, just this week, I actually had a dog chase me and Tivoli down the street, and he was biting his tail. Um, it's very, it's just a sad situation seeing him be like that. I've also noticed cars, they don't even slow down for people when I'm crossing him. I've almost been hit numerous times. Um, and another thing is just people. People have been chasing him. I've, I've seen people throw rocks at him. Um, it's just not a place where a peacock should be. I've, it's just, I, as another person said, I've seen him eat trash and he's actually been caught in backyards and unable to get out before. And um, that's really all I have to say, other than it's just a hazardous place for him to be. Thanks, Dylan. Appreciate it. All right, uh, let's go to Marie. Uh, Marie, if you're there, you can come off mute. One minute or less, please. Hello. Um, this is Marie Atake. I am a former LA City Commissioner on the Board of Animal Services and also the head of Forte Animal Rescue since 2002. I am not against the relocation. I am advocating, however, for due diligence. And I feel like that uh, voting tonight is rather going backwards. This should have been a discussion item, not a voting item, because it's too premature to vote on it at this stage without any potential destination. You must find the location first and do the in-person inspection. Photos, videos, or experts' words are not good enough. It has to be done in person by members of the community. There are so many so-called quote-unquote sanctuaries that only warehouse animals and nobody wants to send Tivoli to such a place. Once the destination is selected, then let the community weigh in. After all those steps are completed, then this can be on the agenda as a voting item, but not tonight. Okay. Otherwise, I feel that we are putting the cart before the horse. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Donna, if you're there. Go ahead and come off mute. Yes. I agree completely with Marie. This, we love the peacock. I live on Maxella. I watch him all the time. I just agree with the person that says that, uh, that people are chasing him and that he's being harmed. The people of our community love him and no one has ever, that I have seen, and I write, I'm right here, have ever tried to harm him. The problem is, is that he began feeding at the uh, senior center and that made him want to cross the street and get to the food. And that was morning and evening. And that really exacerbated the problem of crossing Maxella. My other thing is we have a pen by the lagoon. Obviously someone transported these birds here, probably from Arcadia. And it probably was a relocator also because they wanted to get rid of some of those birds up there. All right, uh, Don, but, sorry. sorry. I have another question. No, no, Don, sorry, we're at the time limit. Let, last, last thought for you, anything else? I think we should know where that bird is going to be. Okay. And that Yosemite 
is a tropical bird. It's not as he doesn't belong in a in a frigid, cold area. Okay. Or it. doesn't belong in the desert. Gotcha. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll go to Jim Green. Jim, if you are here, go ahead and come off mute one minute or less. Hello, folks. Um, so I start with a question. Why do we human beings believe we know what is best for this bird? Um, typically, by all appearances, is thriving. He brings delight to the residents. Um, are we to relocate every squirrel, hummingbird, raccoon, bumblebee that could perhaps um, thrive better in some other environment? Um, I, I say no. Um, perhaps we can do some, there are some issues, perhaps we can do some good education to improve how the community cares for the bird. Maybe James Manley could help us with that. Um, so I say, leave the bird alone. Let's keep enjoying him. Let his life run its course in the place that he's chosen to live. Uh, if not, if the council nonetheless goes ahead with this plan, which I oppose, um, I ask that you um, take Marie Atake's approach and do more diligence before you take that action. Thank you. Great, Jim. Thanks so much. Uh, three more public comments to go. Uh, we'll circle back to. Actually, we'll go to Linda. Linda Lux. Good to see you, Linda. If you're there, go ahead and come off mute. Yes. Hi. Um, I've been a on a team of about six people who've watched uh, the bird, and we call him Romeo, uh, cross Max Hellet every day for almost a year. He showed up during the pandemic. He found a place he likes to sleep, and he comes every night when the sun sets, a very big tree. That's why he comes here. He doesn't come here to eat. He comes here to sleep. We give him snacks when he comes, but that's not why he comes here. I've seen dogs chase him, big dogs chase him across the street. I've seen people try to catch him. I've seen skateboarders try to grab tails. Um, the team of six had to disperse. Some moved away. I went away for quite a while. It's a huge responsibility. He's alive because he's watched carefully. And now people who don't just look at him, but help him. And a lot of people do, and it's really great. But I agree that he needs to be safer. Now that the schools are starting and traffic is so much worse, he needs to be kept safe. If we love him, we will take him to a place where he can have other peacocks and be with people and visit him. Um, but I think we should vote yes tonight um, and then find a place and come back and say, you know, you can vet the places. There's a lot of places between what Jonathan said and uh, Dylan, who's a 15-year-old who's been coming every single night for three weeks, is a wonderful young man. You should give him a commendation. He right. found a place in... Sorry, uh, sorry, Linda, sorry, we're at the time, but always good to hear from you. Thanks for chiming in. Take care. Okay, bye. Uh, over to Robert. Uh, Robert. Are you there, Robert? Yep. Yes, I'm here. Uh, good evening, uh, Neighborhood Council board members. <clears throat> I'm an environmental scientist, as I said before, but a uh, specialty is in ornithology and I've been uh, studied at Cal State Northridge and I'm a scientist on and a specialist on birds. Um, I'm not a genetics person. I disagree with what uh, James Maley said with his PhD in genetics. He kind of laid it out for you that he's not a field naturalist ecologist on the behavior of birds. Um, a couple of things that he pointed out wrong about this is that this is part of an established population. There are more than 100 sightings from Venice to Mar Vista to the Biona wetlands. And then we have males and females. We know that at least the council member, Bill Rosendahl, maintained a captive population and that were released when he passed away. And that may be the source. <clears throat> um, young males, and this male is um, when they want, when they're not the dominant male and they don't get to be with the females, they go off searching and they go up to a mile or more away from the main colony and will hang out in tall trees and that um, at a cemetery near downtown OLA in Hollywood, they've been able to manage the uh, ecology there. So a part of this is about management of uh, giving some selective feeding. Also, the bird is now considered a naturalized bird of North America on Caribbean islands. Uh, last year's um, bird journal said it. I think there needs to be more time and discussion and I should be able to have equal time to James Maley. And the last thing on the styrofoam, the styrofoam uh, was not observed being eaten. There was probably a food remnant that the peacocks are smart. I cite 
and be connection and just pick up a food off the right. side. Uh, Reverend, so, we are at, at time. Thank you so much to for out all the statements by the Okay. Uh, Fritz, we are over to you. Uh, Fritz, are you there? Going once, going twice. The last day, we know. Fritz, are you there? Come off mute. Okay. Uh, last one then we have right now is uh, Stacy. Stacy, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. So I, I have mixed emotions about this. Um, I agree with the, I, I didn't catch his name, the gentleman that just spoke, that they are more widespread than Palos Verdes and Arcadia. I mean, I, my sister lives in Pasadena, they're all over and they thrive there. I think they get relocated because they become a nuisance. But I also don't want to see him hurt. Um, so I agree with Marie that we need to at least be able to have a voice of where he gets to go before you just vote that yes, we're going to relocate him. <clears throat> and also, I want to mention that he didn't used to always go there to that one tree. They feed him regularly at sundown every day. That's why he goes there. But I also want to say that that's 10% of his day. Where is he 80% of the time? He's usually on my street and he stays on one side of the street at a couple houses all day long on roofs and he does pretty well for himself. Uh, <clears throat> but you know, it, I think for his safety, if we find him a good place, then, you know, I think that's the right thing to do. Daisy, that's time. Thanks so much for sharing your thoughts. All right, we are back to the board. Um, Discussion. Glad we got that insight from the community. Actually, pretty spirited debate on both sides. So we are at a place. Any further points of clarification before we go back and forth on the motion that's on the table? Yeah, I have a question. This okay. maybe mostly for Daniel, I suppose. So mm -hmm. my question is: What is the point of having a fund, a funding amount here, and even the NPG, because we cannot vote? To approve an NPG without an NPG application in front of us. Um, so I'm arguing that it is actually premature for other reasons than those stated by Marie and others. Um, so, I mean, Daniel, if we vote on this, wouldn't we need a, sep a separate vote to actually authorize the real NPG? Theoretically, no. Um, we could approve a neighborhood purposes grant today. Typically, we do look at the application prior to the vote, but in past instances, we have approved neighborhood purposes grants without the application in front of us. I'm thinking of repeat offenders like the Boys and Girls Club who have turned in their applications late, but there is another amendment needed to this motion in order for it to be approved by the city clerk. But to answer your question specifically, we don't need the NPG in front of us to approve it. So then I, I, I don't want to vote without an NPG application on it. So oh, well, hold on, we're not at that, that spot I, yet. I know. Yeah, okay. Um, quick question to Ravi. Ravi, do you feel like there's any urgency to passing a motion and getting this rolling tonight? Or do you feel like it can wait? So because our board only meets once a month, um, that's why, yes, I do think there's some urgency to at least um, have some authority to uh, go forward with, you know, looking for the place um, because of the incidents that have been described, which uh, we are seeing increasing incidents of dog attacks, things like that. Yep. Any other points of clarification? Well, can we reward the motion so that you don't put a specific amount and say the motion would be to support, you know, looking into possible places? So are you making an amendment or asking if we can make an amendment? I'm asking Ravi, would you be open to that? Yeah, I mean, really the last clause was kind of added on in the you know, 11th hour. So even if and we could even just strike that conditional approval of an NPG part and then uh, yeah, then they're basically the funding element wouldn't be there. We'd have to come back if we wanted to authorize an NPG. Okay. Uh, Rob, if you want to do a quick screen share, maybe just throw the motion back up with that language possibly stricken out, stricken out, and we can see if there's a second to that amendment. 
can I say something? I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt, but I have to tell you, it's too hard for me right now to raise my hand. <laughs> but I do believe there is a deadline on these MPGs and it's like very quick, it's coming up. Does anybody know? Yeah, I mean, it would be in May, right, Daniel? So we'd have to vote on the May meeting for an NPG. Yes. Yeah. Well, consider this, the NPG for the nonprofit was purely a hypothetical. Um, there's actually plenty of interest among community members in, you know, there's other ways to fund this that don't involve the council issuing an NPG. Okay. Uh, well, we have the amendment now on the table. Uh, is there a second to the language that's written with the piece removed? Is there a second to that? I second it. Uh, great. That was Melanie. Katie. Oh, Katie. Thanks, Katie. And uh, great. Any objection to calling a question on that amendment? Great. Uh, let's voice vote that one. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed to the amendment? Nay. Okay, so we got Dave is opposed. Any abstentions? Okay, so 12 1 amendment passes. Great. Um, anyone like to speak in favor then of the amended motion as written? Uh, Katie, over to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll just make it quick because I know it's late. Um, I first of all want to thank the community members who have been escorting Tivoli. I, I was unaware of this. I enjoy his presence and I love him and my kids love him. And um, I didn't know that there were so many people making sure that um, this bird stayed safe. And I'll be very sad to see him go. Um, but I, I do think it's definitely the right thing for the safety of the bird. And it would just, I, you know, the whole time he's been here, I've worried that we're going to come out and find Tivoli run over one day. And I think that would be very upsetting for everyone involved. So um, just in the best interest of this animal, I, I think it's the right thing to do to relocate him. That's good. Anyone like to speak in opposition to the motion? I will. Uh, Doug, go ahead. Um, I agree with Marie. I'm going to ask this board, do, do we really need a motion to go look for a location? What I think we should be talking about at the next meeting is to do a motion and to be reviewing the locations and to be voting as a board on where we're going to send the bird. Um, so my, I guess it might be a point of clarification is, do we really need to do this vote today? To not the particular motion we're doing, but what we're ultimately talking about, which is approving the ability for us to go find a safe place for him to live. I'd support that. That's my biggest question is where he's going to be located to instead of just this abyss. Yeah, same. Okay, well, let's keep with the back and forth here. Anyone in favor of the motion as written? I just want to chime in. Uh, yeah, Dave, you want to expand then on this? Uh, no, that, I mean, that's it. I just, I, I, I'm, I want the bird to be safe. I also, don't want it to just go into some place that, okay, it's no longer on our agenda and I guess we just forget about it. Um, I, I appreciate the expertise uh, from, and the different perspectives that have been communicated, but the bird's safety is is the most important thing. And we, we should be able to know where it's gonna go before we just say, not here. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Melanie, speaking in favor of? Um, and, and in favor of perhaps an amendment to it, which would say that we will only relocate him if we find a place that someone, a group of people has visited, has approved of, and you know, vetted thoroughly, um, something like that, just to. Okay. Uh, Ravi, you wanna do a quick screen share again and maybe workshop that real quick? I can also give some backstory in terms of the location. The intention was to actually come to this meeting and have a proposed location and even have someone from the location speak. We actually had a place that was interested and just two days ago they backed out. So that's why we're here with a locationless motion. Um, but let me um, screen share. There's also some wording there that was intentional. So in the green committee, we put in this language that in a way that protects the safety and quality of life of the peacock so that we're not approving it to anywhere, but in, you know, that there's the conditions on which, you know, we would be approving. You know, we can definitely amend it to put more conditions there. 
Um, but the reason there was a question of why I approve this now, it's really just the urgency with what's going on out there and that there really isn't a big army of people who are helping him cross the street. It's down to one 15 year old who's been coming every night. Um, and I've been going like a few, you know, a few nights a week and the people who are helping the most are seeing the most as well. So that's the reason for the why tonight, but understand the concerns about the locationless motion. Okay. Uh, Melanie, do you want to make an amendment officially or is that okay from what Robbie just shared? I mean, can we just say um, to the location of Tivoli and Peacock to a thoroughly vetted and board approved habitat? It's just something that just seems a little bit stronger. But then if you have that board approved, it's yeah. you need a, another that's a separate, I mean, so you'd need a motion for this motion. Um, right. Or should we just change this to relocating him and then have another motion next meeting? Because that'll give us the incentive and motivation to find a place for him, which is a lot of work. There's a lot of calls to be made. We've got to do some outreach on that, see if anyone has any connections. because. There's not that many habitats. Make it a two-step process. I don't want to complicate things. Okay. Well, it doesn't like you're articulating a two-step process, which is which is fine. I'm just not necessarily sure I'm hearing yet if there's an amended phrase that would trigger that yet that we've landed on. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. It's really just approving the relocation to be TBD, location TBD. I mean, maybe you can say the DRNC approves the expiration of a location to re, or uh, expiration of a place to relocate to the Peacock, which it, and that's going to get messy. Then it comes down to, to, Bo to Doug's question of, do you need yeah. a motion for, let's say, I mean, th this motion, original motion came from the Green Committee. Do they need a board motion for that, for that committee to explore these possibilities? Oh, I don't think that's true. I mean, the committee could, could explore it without a vote Without tonight. board motion yeah. tonight, right? Yeah, that's they could explore it on their own. But what if we do all this work and we find a great place and then the board doesn't approve it? We've done so much more work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just. Yep, that, that, I mean, that is, that is a, a risk we take. Um, Robbie, do you, do you hear an amendment in there? Do you want a table? Do you want to follow <laughs> call the question? What do you want? Yeah, I mean, I think if we had the luxury of time, if there were a whole army of volunteers who were like helping the peacock, if we didn't have dogs chasing mob leash, we yeah. would we would just be we would say, yeah, let's just find a place and come back next month. It would be that simple. That's not the case, unfortunately. So with every day that goes by, I mean, we can't even count on this 15 year old who's been coming every day to keep coming every day. And unfortunately, nobody else is, is volunteering. Yeah, I mean it's an it's an art to to get this peacock across the street. It's you need a little bit of training, I think. Can so, I ask a procedural question? So if we pass this motion, if time is of the essence and we are to pass this and then we say we find a place that you know, I've I've offered to go look at places. So let's say I just I go out and I find a place and I like it. Is the community at my mercy now? I'd say like, well, I Doug like the place. So I mean we're Who's going to make the decision? Are we going to, is the motion going to designate a team of people who will be able to independently vote on it? Or will it just be one person? It's, I just feel yeah. like this is something that's going to have to go back in front of the board. I feel like it's for the purpose, if nothing else, for the community to have a say in where he ultimately ends up instead of leading that to one if or a small group. Yeah, I agree with Doug. Okay, well then it sounds like, well, I think there's either two options. Robbie, if you want a table or we can proceed with a vote and if it gets voted down, then it would obviously go back to committee anyway. Um, it's up to, I think you as the one who brought the motion, how do you want to play it? 
Yeah, we know to Doug's point, there's still a question of, okay, who ultimately makes a decision, right? Is there going to be a separate committee? Can we authorize the Green Committee to approve the location? So we're approving it subject to the Green Committee finding a location. And that cuts out the community, which is our job is to listen to them. Well, but, they, but they'll have public comments at the Green Committee, with the Green Committee members. I thought every final thing has to go through the board. Yeah, so it's, that's true. And there's a motion can be passed in committee, but to have the full weight of the board, it would need to come back up. Okay. Especially if you're talking about money, like the committee cannot pass a money related okay. thing by itself. Well, we're taking the money out. Yeah. And well, I know, but then once you find it, then what? You can't pay for it. So let's say that we pass this. We don't approve the money tonight, but to actually move, to actually spend the money, you need the board's approval. Yeah, what I'm saying is the money may not be needed. There's other. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There are many ways of funding. I you see. Know. Yeah. So all I'm suggesting is, can we table the selection of the? I mean, I don't think we're going to form an ad hoc. Peacock committee. I mean, we've already tried and with getting people to help them cross, that hasn't really happened. Um, so I'm just suggesting could the Green Committee be the vehicle we use for approving the location? The board approves the relocation subject to the Green Committee, you know, finding a place and the public will have input on the Green Committee. I think that would have to be an amendment made that people would support or not support. I don't think that we could. I'm not sure what I'm hearing. The board members would be comfortable doing that. I may be wrong, um, but that is an option if you want to make that amendment to the language. Yeah, I think I would at least propose that because then that makes it a two week thing and not a four week thing. That's all. Okay. Uh, so, what would that sound like for the proposed amendment? So, um, uh, um, let's have that subject to. could just make a second clause too after the period to say you know the, the green committee will be responsible for uh, selecting or approving uh, the relocation location relocation site yes site thank you that's better <laughs> relocation location okay yeah relocation site meeting these criteria like that okay Okay, uh, as Robbie finishes typing that, is there a second to now this proposed language? A second. I'll second. Okay, we'll give that to Melanie. Uh, any other last points of clarification? Any, <clears throat> any members of the community can attend the Green Committee meeting and Correct. weigh in on this, right? Correct. When anybody is welcome to offer locations, many people have, but you know, go on trips. The thing is, people will say they want to do these things, but then it's getting them to actually participate is the challenge. Yep. Always is. Okay. Uh, any objection to calling the question on the amended on the amendment to the motion? Okay. Uh, let's do that. All in favor of. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. I need to keep track of certain things. So we have an, um, an amendment to. Mm -hmm. Can I amend this? Uh, we need to see if this one passes. On the vote, oh, well, I guess you could object. Well, let's let's see if this passes up or down. And if you want to amend, amend. Let's see. Okay. Well, listen, and Doug, is it like one word or something? Like that? It well, okay, if you're asking, it would be I would just say in a way that protects the safety and life of the peacock, comma subject to the Green Committee finding a suitable relocation site yeah. because we're not we're. We're only agreeing to this if we find something that we in the, in the community agree with. We're not going to relocate the peacock unless we're satisfied with where it's going. Yeah. If, if you think this motion gets to that? I think that's yeah. That's the that's the intention of what you just said. But the but we wouldn't have to come back to the board in in a month. That's what we're trying to uh, prov prevent. If the green committee finds a suitable location. They're empowered then to choose that location. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. I risk way with you. Great. Uh, Melissa, are you ready for the vote? I can do a voice. Yeah. On this. Um, I'm subject to the Green Committee 
Doug finding a suitable location? No, you don't have to make my change. So okay. saying, what hey, go, go back to the way that you just had it, Ravi. Control Z. Okay. Uh, we're ready to call the question on the amendments. I, uh, I want to make sure that we have the, the correct words that I have it down. So is that the amendment we're voting on? So who um, who's the original amender and who's the second? Uh, Ravi was the amender mm -hmm. and Melanie was the second. Okay, so we've got an amendment on the table. Um, yeah. So are we voting on that then? Yeah, we'll do the voice votes again. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. Okay, any opposed to the amendment? Nay. Uh, we got Monica is in opposition and Melissa is in abstention. So that's 11 1 1. Great. All right. Uh, any other points of clarification on now the motion on the table? Any objection to calling the question? Okay. We'll go person by person. Melissa, whenever you're. So this is now as amended that we see on Ravi's screen. Okay. Eric. Yes. Daniel. Yes. I vote no. Monica. No. Melanie. Yes. Doug. No. Ravi. Yes. Katie. Yes. Jocelyn. Yes. Matt Miller. Yes. Dan Warsba. No. Dave. Yes. Thomas. Yes. One, two, three, four. That's a nine yes, and we've got four no. So thanks. it passed. Uh, thanks, everyone. Appreciate the discussion, Ravi. If you can take off the screen share there. Thanks for doing that for us.